Hello, everyone. It's Father Bob Gross. It is 5.30 on Sunday evening, the second Sunday of Ordinary Time, January 15th. I uh, want to offer my homily. Uh, it is during halftime of the important Packers versus Dallas game. The Pack is ahead 21-13. I wanted to get this homily up before the second half. So I hope you're having a good Sunday. One of the most interesting men and important figures I have met in my life is uh, Father Edmund Travers. He's uh, an Australian priest, 74 years old, and he lives in Sydney, Australia. He's the spiritual director for the major seminary there. And I had a chance to meet him uh, and get to know him as we were roommates for three summers as we studied Christian spirituality at Creighton University. When I first saw Father Edmund's name, it was on the letter that told me who I was going to be, who was going to be my roommate. And I thought to myself a couple of things. Who names their kid Edmund anymore? Uh, I wonder what he looked like, and I wonder what he was going to be like. Uh, I was expecting him to be average height, average weight, average build, uh, to be a priest about my age. I was 33 at the time. And then when I walked into the room and met the man I was going to be spending the next three summers with and living with, I found myself meeting a 70-year-old man who was about six foot one, six foot two. He was a pretty big guy. And he had a really thick Australian accent. And I thought to myself, how's this going to work? Well, it actually worked beautifully. We got together really well and we really enjoyed each other's company. And in fact, the funny thing about Father Edmund is that he didn't have to have a spirituality degree. He was already a master spiritual director. And it was just amazing to see the humility that he showed by submitting himself to a course of classes in which he knew a lot from his own study, but most importantly from his vast experience of being a spiritual director for many people. One of the privileges of living with him was the ability to go to confession to him. And I didn't have to go to church, went across the suite in our little room in Creighton, and I'd knock on the door and I'd say, hey, Father, can I go to confession? He would say, sure, let's do it right now. And one time after I confessed my sins to Father Edmund, he asked me this question, do you believe that the Lamb of God can take away your sins? And I thought to myself, I, I guess so. So that's what I said. And he said, you guess so. Realize that if you have faith and trust in God's love, God can heal and take away your sins in this one confession. So he gave me a penance, and he invited me that the next time that I received the precious blood at Mass, that I was to drink in the precious blood into the wounds of my heart. To allow the precious blood to touch those wounds where the origin of my sins come from. So I tried it. And it really was an encouragement of forgiveness, but secondly, it was a challenge to faith. Do I believe that God can change me in the one encounter in the sacrament that I was celebrating? I bring that up because it connects us to the gospel, but also makes a really important point that we have to ponder once in a while in our approaching of the sacraments of confession and Holy Communion. Do we really believe that the Lamb of God can take away the sins of our life? That if, we only, if you only say the word, Lord, and my servant and my soul shall be healed, do we believe that one word, one encounter with Christ can change everything? Because there's a dynamic that happens at Mass every time we come and we celebrate the sacraments. And that is, the first is, is that God acts no matter what. When we celebrate Mass and a priest comes and bread and wine is used and the scriptures are proclaimed and the prayers of the church are prayed, we believe that God changes the bread and wine, that God is definitely present there. Whether we feel it or not, whether we're ready or not, whether we're distracted or not, God acts no matter how we feel about it. But then there's this deeper dynamic in the sacraments, and that is what Latin 
theology would call ex opere operantis, uh, the fruitfulness of the sacrament. And that means, are we experiencing in our own lives and in the graces that we receive a change in our lives? Because the sacraments were given to us not just to celebrate them, but that they would have an effect in our lives to change our minds, to change our hearts, to change our actions, to truly be more Christ-like, to be Christ in the world. I think that's really important to reflect upon. That's why there's been such a long practice within the church of going to confession before we receive Holy Communion. Sin, in a sense, blocks the grace that God wants to give us to work in us. Sin divides, grace unites. That's why the church still teaches that if you commit mortal sin, you should go to confession before you receive Holy Communion. That means like missing Mass or doing something that is gravely wrong. We need to approach the Lord in mercy so that mercy can open the doors of our heart even wider for him to work in our lives. So today, as we heard the gospel, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Do you believe that John the Baptist is speaking to you? Because he is. He's speaking to you. Do you believe in the encounters with the Lord when you come to receive him in communion? And when you receive his mercy and confession, that God can change your life and that he has changed your life. How is your heart when you come to his sacraments? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And we say, Amen. I believe. Amen, we believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help our unbelief. Help us to have the heart that is open to God working more powerfully in the sacraments that we celebrate. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Do you want him to free you from all your sins? Or do you kind of like some of your sins? Let's pray for the grace that we always want to be in God's grace. For when we are in God's grace, we are in his will, we are in his joy, and we will attract others to the grace of Christ by the witness of our lives. Behold the lamb, the lamb who is slain, who takes away your sins. Will you let him choose and ask the Lord to make his sacraments more fruitful in your life. Have a great week, and God bless. And let's pray for um, protection from the storm that's coming in, the ice storm, especially those who make their living by driving, like truck drivers and plow drivers and semi-drivers. Let's pray for their safety. Thanks for listening to the homily. Please listen and have a great week. May God bless you.